This is KGW News at Noon. Have you seen this video? A Chinese balloon that was seen floating across the U.S. was shot down on Saturday. The Pentagon thinks the balloon was spying on the U.S. military, but Chinese, uh, Chinese officials maintain that it was just a weather balloon that had blown off course. Hello and thank you for joining me for the news at noon. I'm Devin Haskins. U.S. military officials are continuing to search for the balloon's wreckage. They hope that it can shed light on its capabilities and possible mission. Here's NBC's George Solis with the latest. And today, Navy divers and recovery ships expect to continue searching that roughly seven mile stretch of ocean where it's believed most of this balloon debris fell after being shot over the weekend. This has certainly been the talk of the town. Many people flocking to the area, even in the pouring rain yesterday, to catch a glimpse of these recovery efforts. Speaking of which, there is some video circulating around that appears to show the U.S. military recovering some of that balloon debris here in Myrtle Beach. Now, as we know, the Pentagon says the bulk of this debris fell in about 47 feet of water, which is good news that should help expedite some of the recovery efforts as it was projected to fall in deeper water. Now, as we know, the balloon entered U.S. airspace roughly last week before moving into Canadian airspace and then transversing most of the continental U.S. China maintaining it was a weather balloon that simply drifted off course. But then, as we saw, the balloon shot down in spectacular fashion by a, a single side wider missile from an F-22 jet. Spokesperson for the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs responding, calling it an unacceptable and irresponsible action. The message from authorities here in the Carolinas is that if some of this balloon debris happens to wash on shore in the coming days, to simply leave it alone and certainly don't take it home because doing so could mean that you are interfering with a federal investigation. Back to you. All right, we're continuing to follow the ongoing situation out of Turkey and Syria. Officials now say that two massive earthquakes are responsible for more than 2,400 deaths across both nations. The first one, a 7-point magnitude, 7.8 magnitude rather, hit around 5.30 p.m. our time yesterday. And then at 2.45 our time this morning, another earthquake, a 7.5 magnitude rocked the country. The shocking video out of Turkey shows the moment a building came crashing down, the number of in injured and missing expected to climb as crews continue to search for any survivors today. Back here at home in Portland, a strike involving more than 600 city employees has ended. Our Brian Clerkley talked with workers at a rally after the two sides had reached an agree a tentative agreement early yesterday morning. When public services are under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. That's right. After three days of striking, finally a tentative agreement. Workers in wastewater treatment, pollution testing, street maintenance, and park ranger services have reached an agreement with the city of Portland. One of the most important parts of this tentative agreement is a 13% salary increase for all Portland city laborers by July 1st of 2023. At a rally in North Portland Sunday evening, you could feel the relief in the air. It's been really invigorating to see people feel their own power and uh, recognize their value to the city in a way the city wouldn't. They want you with your hands on your tools for as long as possible for as little pay as they can give you. During the rally, you could see city workers holding up signs that said solidarity with essential workers and city workers make the city work. Other parts of the agreement include increases in standby pay and increases in annual work hours for seasonal park rangers. Negotiations between union representatives and the city had gone on for about 10 months. It's also going to help the city financially because they're not going to lose quality people. They're not going to struggle with the cost of recruitment and retaining. They're not going to struggle with the high cost of low morale where people do the bare minimum. The work isn't all the way done, but phew, we get to take a breath. In a statement, the city said we're grateful that we were able to maintain the essential services Portlanders rely on every day. We're also grateful that we can welcome our colleagues back to work. Killian Haas is an arborist with the city of Portland. Especially with the cost of living, if, if you don't get it now, then you lose it every year. For this, and the same concept on saving money early for retirement, you don't want to lose money on your pay early in your career. And we feel that if we didn't address it now, then it would get worse and it'd be harder to climb up that hill and make up the difference. Bryant Clerkley, KGW News. All right, so the city council and the union both need to approve the new contract. They say that vote scheduled for next week. 
Stay with KGW. We'll bring you updates on air and online at KGW.com. All right, taking a quick look outside at the, uh, from the view from our Rose City Skycam. Some of us, like myself, waking up to light rain this morning. So will that rain continue? I'll let Rod Hill answer that question. Well, we started off with rain out there in the tail at noon today is the ongoing chance that some more light showers could develop. Otherwise, you're going to find today to be pretty quiet. We have the gray skies. Winds have been mostly southwest to southeast 5 to 15. And you know, one of the big weather stories not to get lost in the shuffle uh, is that we are enjoying much warmer nights in comparison to, you know, a week ago. <laughs> it was really cold in the morning. So these were the lows this morning, 38 in Hillsboro, 41 up in Kelso. 43 out of PDX. And it was even comfortable this morning out in Hood River where it was 41 degrees. Uh, real quick, I'll show you some other temps. Salem dipped down to 39. And it wasn't bad out east this morning either. You folks uh, in Prineville, John Day and Burns enjoying, of course, a dry Monday. Most of you have already reported a good bit of sunshine. Uh, light shower chance is going to continue for you today. This is the front that I'll talk about more coming up that will bring a very rainy Tuesday as that front comes in. So real quick, I think we have fairly steady temperatures. The remainder of today will say about 50 degrees for a high, and I'll have your seven day forecast coming up. A new report from the Oregon Health Authority on Measure 110 found in its first three months, more than 18,000 people struggling with drug abuse got immediate help. Later, that number increased to more than 60,000. Still, state lawmakers are considering cutting millions of dollars in funding. Voters approved the controversial law in 2020. It decriminalized certain amounts of hard drugs while helping people access recovery services. Overall, $265 million went to 42 recovery groups and 11 tribal partners, reaching every county in the state. A sobering center in Southern Oregon uh, reported that they had eased the local emergency room burden um, and served as a stepping stone to residential treatment and detox services. OHA also found more than 200 new jobs were created around the state helping people recover. In a public hearing less than 24 hours after the report was released, though, the House committee considered cutting as much as $60 million. Another hearing over the funding of Measure 110 set for tomorrow.